Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel, welcome back to my channel, Bam B and No. Um, yeah, we're gonna do a collections video, another one. This will probably be, unless I've forgotten about another system, um, this will probably be my last collections video of 2022. So if you don't, want, don't know what my collections um, videos are about, or why I do them. It's quite obvious this is going to be about my Nintendo 64 and also my Super Nintendo game catalogue. I don't collect for the Super Nintendo anymore because I don't own one. But I've got three games in my collection, so I'll explain um, why I've got them. Um, also, um, I do these videos. It's kind of for my benefit and for yours. So I hope you get something from these videos. But it's kind of just cataloging in 2022 what games are in my... Uh, Nintendo 64 collection okay um, the I was always growing up we were always like a console behind we weren't poor but my pair I was hard sell like we had the Sega Master System it was always a hard sell to ask my parents for like so we had this year we had the Sega Master System next year I wanted the Mega Drive and my parents like you've got a Sega why would you want another Sega I couldn't they didn't understand. I, I wasn't clever enough to explain to them. I'd say the games are better. It's more powerful. In a nutshell, that's what it is. But I couldn't explain it. My parents thought it was the same thing or something like that. So my parents, all, whenever it went in sale, and when consoles come in sale, like cheap, cheap, it's because the new ones, the new consoles come out or the it's about to come out kind of thing. So when they stop making them, they go dirt cheap. So that's kind of... When I, that Christmas or birthday, that's when we had our consoles, you know. So, like, the Super Nintendo came out. Um, sorry, we had the Super Nintendo the Christmas or the year after. Um, the, we knew that the uh, Nintendo 64 was coming out. So, we were very late to the party with a lot of our consoles. But this was the first console I ever bought out of my own money, okay? So, and it wasn't my brother's, it wasn't a half and half, this was my console, okay? And I remember it clearly, I don't exactly remember how much I paid for it, but what will stand out is the game I had with it, okay? It's a special game, it'll always be a special game for me, okay? Um, maybe I didn't realise how special it was when I bought it, but the funny story is, um, I was actually saving, I was too young to have a job, but we'd have pocket money and stuff like that. Um, I had a couple of quid a week or five, ten pounds. I can't remember exactly what it was. But a lot of the money my, my father gave me was for uh, school lunches and stuff like that. So what I used to do was some days I'd have I'd skip a meal here, skip a meal there, and I'd pocket that money. That's how much I was into gaming. It was quite hard back then. Like I was, um, We were swimming twice a day, me and my brother and my mates back then. We were all swimmers. So you needed the energy, so it was quite a sacrifice, you know, to go without the odd meal. But that's how much of a gamer I was back then, and still am. Um, yeah, so I'd save in, save in, save in, and I think they were around about the £200, £220 pound in Argos. That was the original plan to buy it there. But then one day I was in Swansea, I think we'd gone to the cinema or something, and I always used to beg my brother, like he wasn't really into gaming at all uh, around about this time. I think I would have been 16, something like that. So maybe I was old enough to get a job. Uh, but I didn't have a job then, let's say. Uh, swimming was taking up all of my time. Can I argue it? I was technically getting some money. It didn't work out much, mind. But um, anyway, it's not about it's not the swimming fucking channel. Um, yeah, so we were walking through and I, I called in there on the way back, on the way home. Um, and I noticed they had in console action, I still go there to this day, this shop's been there for years, and we went in and he had a Nintendo 64, I think it was like about 60 quid cheaper than recommended retail price, it didn't come with a box, I didn't give a fuck about the box, and I thought, oh my god, I've got, actually got the £160 in the bank, I've done this a load of times, i spent every single penny in my bank on a new console, I've probably about four or five consoles, I've got the same story, but I, I saw it, I said to the guy, I'm going to go to the um, cash machine, I'll be right back, please don't sell it to anyone else, he's rolled his eyes, whatever pal, so I went to the, sh the cash machine, and on the way back to the, the shop to buy it, I thought, fuck, it doesn't come with any games, 
So I was like, I'm going to buy a Nintendo 64. I'm not going to have any games. It's like, oh my God, are you shitting me? So um, I begged my brother. I thought, can you please lend me money for any of the games? Can you, like, the cheapest game in there? And my brother, um, he agreed basically. He said, whatever the cheapest game is, I'll lend you the money for that. Maybe if it was like a Barbie game or something like that, I wouldn't be so enthusiastic about this game. But believe it or not, the cheapest game they had in stock was Killer Instinct Gold. And fortunately, this isn't the original copy. I'd love to have kept that. It was boxed. The box wasn't... It was, obviously, if you didn't know, all the boxes were cardboard. So it's very rare to see an half-decent condition box for these games. Uh, but this is like the plastic uh, re reprinted box, okay? But anyway... This, this is the game I had, but not the actual game, if that makes any sense, okay? So I had this. I was skint. I didn't regret it at all because that this is what I was saving up for. Um, Killer Instinct on the Super Nintendo was a very good game. We didn't own it. I can't remember who we borrowed it off, um, but it's fun. it was an amazing game. Very, very visually light years ahead of the competition. Uh, it was up there with Street Fighter 2, in my opinion. And, um, yeah, so I was aware of the franchise and stuff, but I thought, yeah, this game will do, you know, as so this game on nothing, basically, because I, if I say it was like 12, 15 quid or something, all the other games are like £20 plus or whatever they were going for. I've got no memory of how much the, my brother lent me for it. Um, and fuck, I played this game to death and back, Bambino. Oh, Rossi's come in. Hello, boy. You okay? Can I say hello to everyone? Up. Watch your head now. Oh, look at him. Look at my... Can you see my dog? What's up here? Kiss. He was naughty the other day. Right, down then. Yeah, so... I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Right, that's the way, boy. Good boy. He bit me. I googled it. Um, he's, not nasty, he's not a nasty dog. He's just playful. And when I was taking him for a walk... Well, we went on our Thursday evening run. And we were ready to go. It was fucking freezing. Just about so outside my house. Went down to pick his lead up. And he just he just went and bit me. Like nipped me, did. And he drew blood. Oh, so after my hand, hand amputated now. Oh, actually, this is a fake hand. It's like one of those prosthetic hands. It's going to make me much better at Street Fighter Five apparently. So hopefully... Yeah, he's okay. Yeah, so yeah, he bit me. So he was naughty. Anyway, getting back to this. Yeah, I played this to fucking... Death and back. I love, and I've always, I've always got an appreciation for the Killzone franchise. These games got the best soundtrack of any video game, not just fighting games. The Killer Instinct. I listen to it. It's, it's my housework song. The new Killer Instinct main theme song is what I listen to. I put my headphones on, run doing the hoovering and stuff like that. And because it's like over six minutes uh, song. Uh, anyway, this game's got to always have a special place in my heart, and I got I love the N sixty four, okay, and uh, this is what an introduction to uh, the sixty four uh, era, Nintendo sixty four era, I should say. So yeah, that was my first game I ever had on my Nintendo. Um, I can't remember what my I only ever bought when I'll do this game next then. I bought one game brand new. I always used to buy my games pre owned. Back then, I'd rather have a case, but it wasn't the be-all and end-all. Oh, I can hear my dog playing with his squeaky toys now. Um, yeah, so I'd... Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, so I didn't... I wasn't a collector. I was just buying games. I was trading games in. And I, I was that's when that market started to pick up, you know, in the for me anyway, in the N64 era. But the only game I ever brought, bought brand new was Two Rock 2. I f amazing game. This holds up now, and it as well, it's on the PlayStation Store, isn't it? Two Rock Two. I think it's something like three ninety nine. I'll never forget this game. The there was like a cheats, and you just type in passwords, and the one the best cheat or the god cheat or whatever it's called is beware, oblivion is at hand. It's funny the stuff you remember. I'll never ever forget. No matter how much tablets I take off my medication, some memories are uh, built in for life, you know. So that cheat does level select, invincibility, uh, every weapon, and unlimited ammo. So I didn't... It was quite boring if, you've, if, if you're invincible, isn't it? So the only cheat I did was I'd have all the um, weapons. 
so i just experience all the weapons it's really good fun you know but yeah really 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 good game um i love the fact that um it was like dinosaurs because dinosaurs were massive weren't they when this game came out around all the jurassic park shit and um first person shooter with dinosaurs but the dinosaurs are like muted mutated dinosaurs it's the coolest thing ever that was uh two rock two um Another big moment then with the uh, N64. This was the f so this is Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. This was a big deal. I think this is the actual game I had from back in the day. Uh, I've got a bit of a bit of a sad story. This is the case, but the actual inside the cartridge. I had to rebuy the cartridge. Um, yeah, but this was, I'll say that story in a sec, but this was the first time I ever experienced a 3D fighting game, a uh, shooting game. Because uh, we, I was always used to like 2D platformers or fighting games. And this was, a, this was a big deal. They treated this, it felt like it was a new movie coming out. I honestly thought when I saw the posters, there was a new movie coming out because they had this. You could buy the soundtrack, you could buy figures, you could buy the books. It was like... Not just the game on the shelf, it'd be the game and all the other um, merch that comes with the game. Uh, I'd never saw that before. Um, so I thought it was, I honestly, for about, until I realised, for about a week or so, I thought, oh, there's a new Star Wars coming out, awesome. But um, br very good, very good game this is. Uh, I think I have finished it. I tried to play it recently and fuck, how could we, the controls are so foreign to us now. Because we're, so, we're spoilt now, and really, this day and age. But the sad story with this, the reason I kept the case, this is the original case, from when it first came out. Um, I lent the car... Cause I never used to lend the cases. When It was a lot of um, my friends at Nintendo 64s. But I would only ever... I'd take it out to the box and give them the cartridge. Because I think one of my mates lent the game to someone. And when he gave it back, the boy gave it back, the case was battered and bruised he really upset my friend and i thought hmm when i ever get an n64 um i'm never gonna uh, that won't ever happen to me because I've, I've i've always had it in uh, built into me to look after my stuff um and hopefully you can tell i don't think i had this again i very rarely bought games brand new this price is worn off oh actually l game 9.99 i paid for that uh, in l game yell game uh yeah so happy days yeah so the sad story is i lent the um the game to one of my best friends at the time and we would have been 18 and he lent me a couple of games i'll show you them in a sec uh he had them for a couple of weeks but i'd, I'd done i'd finished this game and i wasn't that fussed to the games he lent me he's like oh, i'll lend you this uh, okay, and then he go, oh, I'll lend you this, this, this kind of thing. Trying to get me into his style of games, more into his sport games. I was like, yeah, okay. I don't think I've one or two of the games I've never, ever played in my life. Anyway, uh, I still kept them. Uh, what happened, unfortunately, when we were 18, we went on a night out. Um, he was four or five of us. Um, and he passed away on the night out. It was a terrible time in my life. And I became friends with his family after that it was a hell of a thing for his family and us as friends but he had an older brother he had a younger brother and his younger brother growing up he was the spitted image of my friend from uh, comprehensive school uh i'll never forgive myself we had an argument that night so i was like oh, i'll apologize to him tomorrow or whatever um unfortunately he didn't make it so um i won't go into it anymore but i didn't i went up the house as you would, very nervous going up, knocking on the door. They could have told us to fuck off for all we know. Uh, but they, I think, uh, they're friends for life now, let's say. They invite us to barbecues and stuff like that over the years. Very nice people. And, um, yeah, I never had the guts to say, can I go get my game back from his bedroom? So I just thought, right, forget about it. Um I thought now's not the time. I don't think any any time is the time. So this will always have that little special memory. Uh, he enjoyed the game when he was playing it anyway. But he wasn't really into Star Wars or first person shooters. Uh, when we get to it, I shall tell you the games he lent me. Um, but I, I think he did like that game, you know. Yeah, so that's uh, Shadow of the Empire. Very good game, but very hard. to con The controls, it's not a hard game, but the controls are so hard. 
Uh, another game I kept from back in the day. I wouldn't have bought this. None of these games I bought brand new, you know. Uh, so Zelda Ocarina of Time. Uh, this is almost looks identical to when I had it back in the day. I, I remember being a bit annoyed that the, 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 they'd sell a tape this on there. It's like, God, what are you idiots? But um, every man and his gran has played this game, haven't they? Uh, i got to be honest, if I'm going to play this game, I've got a version of it on the GameCube, and I've got the updated version on the Nintendo 3DS. So that'll be my go-to, and uh, the controls are a little bit better on the DS, and like the Water Temples, if that's what it was called, they've simplified them. It's a bit more, it's not quite as hardcore as this game, you know. But I, I remember, I saw into this game, my brother... Um, and his housemates are all Nintendo fans as well, or my brother's housemates are there. And um, I remember phoning my brother to ask how stuck or something. I said, how do you do this? And they were all like coming to the phone. Oh, uh, where whereabouts are you? And I'd say this, and no, 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 I'm not there. And they'd all be talking. It's like, bless him, innit? I'm just phoning my... My, I can imagine my brother on the phone, or my little brother stuck on Zelda, and they all came out to their rooms to fucking help me. To try, well, try to help me, do you know what I mean? I got good memories. It's a very good time in my life, this was. Um, this, my brother was in university, obviously. And I kind of experienced some... I was never intelligent enough to um, to go to university or anything like that. I struggled in school. Uh, still done all right for la out of life, but um, school wasn't for me. It's not for everyone, you know. Um, but I kind of experienced the university life through my brother. I used to hang around uh, campus and shit like that sometimes. I got, yeah, it's just like, taking it all in, you know. So I did kind of, through my brother, live a little bit of the university life. Um, but yeah, so this is one of those games. I've got fond memories. It's a special game for a lot of people. But like, I know when I play this, listen to some of the music or the, um, the sound effects of the game, and it'll instantly take me back to a very happy time in my life, you know. I still love going at my brother's flat and just hanging out there, you know. Yes, that's Zelda Ocarina of Time. Uh, I'll do I'll do this one then. This is the original box from back in the day. I believe it is anyway. Uh, Micro Machine 64. This is our favourite game um, that we used to play. We used to go, it's pre, it, great game for pre-drinks. So my brother and all his university friends and I'd be there sometimes. Uh, sometimes I'd go there. I remember I slept over... Because I had an interview in Argos the next day, and it was quite early. So I thought, if I can sleep on my, the, my brother's, on the floor of my brother's uh, room, I can just walk to the interview nice and fresh in the morning. But this is the game. They'd all be drinking and stuff every night, living the university life, isn't it? Um, but this would be the pre-drinks. This is what we'd be playing. Sometimes when we come home pissed, this is what we'd be playing. My favourite um, vehicle to play as is the... Oh, it hasn't got it on the back. Is the tank... And it was so funny, and none of my brother's mates or my brother figured out what I was doing. Do you know when, if you just fire, you know when it got like three, two, one, and start, I always used to fire my bullet, and it's just blow everyone up, because they'd be just in range, they'd start. So, we'll start in here, and you're driving this way. If I just fire my bullet, it's going to fire over them. But you wait two seconds, one, two, you fire your tank, and it just blows everyone up, and then you start did it every single time and it's so satisfying but and so funny to do as well it takes a while to get used to the controls um because it doesn't play like any other driving game it's kind of top down um but yeah it's a ton of fun and that, again just looking at these pictures on the back it just transports me back to a very happy time in my childhood or young adulthood i suppose you could say if i was late teenagers you know uh quick two uh, I don't think I had this. I think I borrowed this growing up. and uh, I bought this, and again, it's one of those games I just can't get used to the controls. I, for some reason, I had this. I understand now what it was. I thought this is the game I had growing up, but I had the Xbox 360 Quake 4 that came with Quake 2 as a bonus disc with the modern controls, the controls we're used to. This, fuck, you know, I've, I put hours trying to play it, and it's like... It's so hard because the controls are so bad. It's just little minions shooting at you. You think, oh, if it was just normal controls, 
this would be a walk in the park, but you're just fighting against the controls, that's how it feels. But a lot of the first person, this was early first person shooters, wasn't it? So uh, we've come a long way since these days, let me tell you. Uh, but I am glad to have that in the collection. It's not the best condition box. Uh, I think I bought this in Retro Stash in Port Albert. He had it in there for a good price, so I thought, yeah, fucking happy days. Okay then, so we've done that game. Uh, okay, so the only game in my collection I haven't ever played is Fighter's Destiny. I've got, um, oh, it's an American magazine from the 90s. How it's in the UK, I don't know. It's in my collection now, anyway. And it's got, like, um, it's like a guide for all the games that came out that year. And this Fighter's Destiny was in there. I thought if I ever see it in the wild, I'll pick it up. It was only a couple of quid. Um, I can't remember. It might have been in CX. Or maybe one of those cast generator kind of places. Uh, I saw it for like literally two or three quid. So I thought, yeah, fuck, I'll, I'll give it a go. But I haven't got round to it yet. I haven't played my N64 for a while, I've got to be honest. And another game, which is an absolute classic. Whenever anyone thinks of the Nintendo 64, 96.324% of people will say GoldenEye. I had this. This was... Um, I had this quite new. I think I bought... This isn't the original, unfortunately, that I had uh, from back in the day. I'd like to find a box version of this. Uh, I was more of a Perfect Dark fan, mind, than, than this game. But, um, yeah, I did everything on this. I got really good at this game, actually. And I used to have, like, mini tournaments and stuff at my house. And I remember some of my friends thought I was cheating. They thought I was in, like, say I was in port number one. My controller's in port number one. They used to swap controllers with me. I was like, oh, you must have done something. Then swap over the control ports. I had some very strange friends growing up. Uh, as if that was possible. But it was like, the people just couldn't kill me on it. I bet my advantage was, um, this is probably the time where I can class I was a full-time swimmer. So I used to go swimming in the morning. I dropped out to college. And then I used to go, like, have all day to rest. And I had, like, swimming in the night. So it'd be like an hour and a half in the morning, then two hours every night. It was exhausting, right, sometimes. But, um, yeah, I was inter at international level back then. So uh, there was a little bit of money coming in with it. But, um, yeah, i just play. I'd go. To, I'd have a, an, a, like an afternoon nap or something, you know, so I'm ready to have my grueling two-hour session in the night. But, um, yeah, I used to play this every single day. And when my, it's mainly my swimming friends used to come over, they had the game, but they didn't used to play it as religiously as me. I knew every single map, um, everything about this game. Um, but, yeah, I fucking loved that game growing up. Um, my favourite game, other than Killer Instinct, would probably be Perfect Dark. I haven't got that in my collection. But I never forget, I thought it was really cheap of Nintendo to do this. That's what I felt at the time anyway. But you needed that expansion pack. So basically what the expansion pack does, it's a small, it's like a tiny little cartridge that goes into the, plugs into the console, not into where the games go. It was like, I never knew it was, this flap was, I never even saw it um, until I knew I needed it. So it's like, um, yeah, a flap that would go into another part, still on the top of the, the console, but not, not the cartridge. It was another cartridge slot, if that makes any sense. Um, and Perfect Dark came out, and I knew I was, it was a bit of hype, it was Rare made it, uh, the company Rare, and it was like the next big thing, and I had all the magazines saying Perfect Dark, this, this, and I fucking loved it. I was reading all the articles and everything about it. So I went to buy it, and luckily there was a guy that served me. It wasn't in game. It was in, they used to be by Swansea train station. Um, oh, I'll never forget. Any of the Swansea guys, what was the name of the can you remember what the name of the um shop was right by the train station in swansea uh anyway i saw it in there and i had enough money on me to buy that and the guy said i had no idea and it did say on on the actual box and it was like this information here it said expansion pack required so what the expansion pack did as far as i'm aware it just made give your console that extra bit of power so some of the games wouldn't run without this expansion pack. I was like, what? Is he trying to sell me something? But he showed me on the box. He said, no, I need the expansion pack. All oh, right, okay, because the good news is we have got them, 
But the bad news is Nintendo have stopped selling them on their own. So the only way you could get the expansion pack, right, was to buy Donkey Kong 64. Because that came with the expansion pack. So you had to buy this shit game, right, which is more expensive at the time than Perfect Dark. So I'm expecting to spend £25, for example. Then I have to chuck another 40 quid on top just to play the cheaper game. i got to be honest, I did have a bit of fun with... Um, that Donkey Kong 64 game, but I didn't, I I wasn't into that, I wasn't my genre, you know, 3D platformers, I've never really been into my 3D platform games, so I was like, I thought it was very cheap of Sony, so, sorry Sony, and apologise, not you, I thought it was very cheap for Nintendo to do that, um, so I, had to, I was down another 40 quid, um, so I had to get this, you know, it was all true, but what an amazing game, really good story game, uh, it was seven hours, I think it was seven, nearly eight hours. My other friend, another Chris, Chris Richards, shout out Chris Richards. If you watch this, Chris Richards, you'll probably remember, you've got a photographic memory. What was this name of that store by Swansea, Mar uh, Swansea train station? You'll remember. Um, it's like a, something in his head you'll never forget. But yeah, I remember him coming down the house once. My girlfriend at the time was just sitting behind us. She'd come there, she only used to see her once a week, because we lived quite far apart. I went to different schools and everything. And we just played. It was like, well, it, it was rude. She came to see me, but at the time I was so into my gaming. Maybe that's why I'm still single. <laughs> Pray for Tony. <laughs> no, I don't care. I don't care, I'm happy. Um, yeah, so we played seven hours. It was like, and then she had to go. I was like, oh, I hardly spoke to her. <laughs> Never mind, kind of thing. Um, Yes, that was my one of my favourite games on the N64, but I didn't like when Nintendo did. Why stop making it and then make you, forcing you basically to play, buy the newer games that you not necessarily wanted just to get that fucking expansion pack. Okay, another game I played briefly, NASCAR 99. Now, this is one of the games my friend, I'm trying my best not to name him. Um, you know, I don't want my channel to be naming for my gain or anything but it's part of my part of my history part of my gaming uh, life you know uh, this is one of the games my friend lent me you know so um again i'm gonna look after it um it's in a good home but uh, yeah i'm never gonna sell anything because technically it's not mine you know and the other two games okay so that that's pretty much my nintendo 64 collection okay i do look out for nintendo 64 games I want to get, um, I think it's Rogue Squadron is next, or oh, is quite close to the top. I really went Mortal Kombat 4. I nearly had it in, in London Comic Con this year, um, but I was really ill and I wasn't thinking straight, so I fuck it slipped through my fingers. I will get it one day and I want that boxed. Um, there's a couple of games, but I'm not in a, a mad hurry, you know, I'm not trying to build up the collection. I'm playing the waiting game, but as far I got them, the main game probably, other than Perfect Dark, which I will get that game one day. But to be fair, if I'm going to play that, I'd rather invest in an Xbox and play the rare replay version. Yeah, because that's it makes more sense. That's the when I had an Xbox One, the rare replay was by far the best game. That and Killer Instinct. Anyway. Um, the other two games, my friend had sadly passed away. They were on the Super Nintendo. Uh, he lent me NBA Jam and FIFA. I said he was into his sports uh, sports games, but um, yeah, I, he was trying to get me in. I was trying to get in him into like Star Wars games and fighting games, and he was more into uh, sports games. So that's what he lent me. I played them both briefly, but. Um, yeah, his initials on the back as well. So, yeah, there's there's memories there, you know. They're uh, they never ever. They're not mine to sell. I'm holding on to them for my uh, my friend. Rest in peace. So the only other game I've got, I don't know how I've got it. Still kept it from back in the day. Is Donkey Kong Country? What an amazing game. Um, this blew everyone away. The the graphics on this game are brilliant. They're still impressive today. Um, the reason as well, then, I don't collect for the Super Nintendo. Well, I haven't got a Super Nintendo. I've seen a couple of decent condition ones in the wild, but I've got the Super Nintendo Mini, and 
that's got the majority of the games. It's got Street Fighter Two Turbo on there. It's got Mario World. It's got Mario Kart on there. Um, it's got a, it's got most of the big hitters on there. Uh, it does seem quite a lot of money to invest in games I'm not going to be playing a lot. So if I've got that itch for my that sixteen bit itch, then I've I've got the mini. It's always linked up to my TV. And when my friends do come over, it is one of our go tos. We either put the PS4 or PS5 on or the Super Nintendo because it's got the the two controllers and it's a very good um those games have aged really well let's say better than a lot of the other games the more modern games you know so um yeah that was the that's the reason i haven't got um many more games in the super nintendo uh collection okay i can't see me it's like a pecking order if i'm gonna buy a new console next year it's either gonna be a nintendo switch or dreamcast it's not even on the radar at the moment, i got to be honest. There's other consoles uh, I want before that, you know. Um, anyway, yeah, thank you very much for <coughs> for watching this video. Sorry I was a bit of a downer in there, but it is important. Um, I'm documenting my life in gaming. So I was the happiest time, some hard things we had to go through during the lifetime, uh, lifespan of the Nintendo 64. But I got a lot of fond memories. It's an important console for me, you know. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. Please hadook in that subscribe button. I would love us, right, to get to 300 subscribers by the end of the year. That means I've done 300 because I've started, I think, April, my new YouTube channel. So I'd love to get to 300 by the end of the year. Don't panic, it's not the end of the world. But if you half like my content and you don't want to miss out on any of my new videos because they're amazing, <laughs> they're not. It's just me talking shit in front of the camera. Please just consider hadooking that subscribe button for me. There we are. Enough begging and plugging my own channel. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye.